Hey, 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 this is your boy Diverse in the building. Hey, you tuned in the views from the booth. And right to the right, I got who though? That boy Black C, one half of that RBL posse was at. Yes, sir, the legendary Black C, man. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming. Yeah, of course, bro. Uh, top, of course. you feel me? Yeah, so, uh, for those that don't know, like I say, you a whole ass legend in this game and Appreciate everything, you, but we also reaching out to the younger generation. So mm -hmm. for them, just introduce who you are and uh, where you come from also. Man, you know, Black C, like I mentioned before, one half of RBO Posse, rest in peace, Mr. C. You know, straight out of that San Francisco, Frisco, as you can see. And uh, man, been doing it since uh, 30 years uh, this month, made 30 years. So, you know, it's a... Uh, 30 year anniversary, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, man, that's 30 years in. Been been doing this since 92, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. Did you come up with a 30 year anniversary package? Yeah, we actually re released the album, uh, Clear Vinyl album. Okay. You know, uh, we did the jackets, you know, a little some merch, uh, you know, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, no banner hoodies, the whole nine. Yeah. Okay, okay, I dig it. I yes, see y'all out there with the uh, with the vendor booths going yes, crazy sir. with the merch and everything. Yes, sir. So, uh, tell the people a little bit about how you grew up. Man, grew up in uh in the projects in Hunters Point, you know, by way of Harbor Road. Uh, you know, like any like any other inner city, you know, you know, like the concrete jungle. Uh, single mom, you know, me and my two brothers, and uh, man, I had to. Uh, I ain't gonna say I had to uh, grind to get it because moms, we was we was kind of spoiled in the hood. I would say we was kind of like upper class in the hood. Yeah, you know she made I mean? sure y'all was. She was working. Yeah, she worked at the bank and the whole nine. Our house was nice, you know. We you know, were still struggling. outside though. Oh yeah, yeah. We <laughs> were struggling like some of my friends who moms was on dope and shit like that who come spend a night over our house and you know yeah. they, you know we had to give them clothes and give them things, do things like that. Now we was we was good. I was actually a, a spoiled kid. She got me whatever I want. You know mm -hmm. what I mean. Yeah. So, uh, at what point did did you see a, a a turnaround just within your life? Um, really, the music turnaround. I mean, from uh, like you say, your mom, your mom, you feel me? She mm -hmm. provided for you and everything. Right. But then, like I say, there is an outside. So, like, well, around what age did that come? Uh, as far as like going outside, you were just being in the streets. Yeah. Uh, man, the day I really was out going to the gym and hanging out, that was probably what eleven, twelve. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of. Uh, you know, start getting influenced by all the, you know, drug dealers and, and, and uh, you know, little pimps, players, Max, who was out on the block. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I got, I kind of got infatuated with that and started hustling probably around like 14, 15, you know, uh, got on drugs, you know, was fucking with the coke and the whole nine mm -hmm. and just start partying and, you know, that kind of sent me down the wrong path a little bit, you know, started uh, running around. I, I talk about a lot of it in the book and everything, yeah. but... Um, we gonna uh, get to I, the book too, for the show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I explained on it a little bit, but uh, yeah, I ended up, yeah, started just grinding, you know, that, that crack era, you know, got out there trying to slang weed for a minute and, and uh, that money was kind of slow and, you know, all of a sudden you learn how to rock up that Coke and them little shaker bottles and, you know, I was off to the races from there. So what, I mean? what got you out of that mentality? Um, really, I would say the first thing was like the my daughter and then the music. I would say my daughter came around the same time our album dropped. So, you know, she was she born in 91. Our album came out in 92. But when I had her, I got out, I got out of Log Cabin Ranch, this little juvenile uh, uh, detention center that's out in La Honda, California. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like one step be below uh, YA. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I got out of that. Had my daughter, and that slowed me up. You know what I mean? I started thinking. That's a blessing of, right there. Yeah, she, she was a blessing for real. Yeah. And um, from there, you know, just getting with Budweiser, my boy Budweiser, man, I thank God for him kind of like coming to me and asking me to, you know, go into the pawn shop and uh, help him buy some equipment. You know, I had a little money. You know, he was struggling a bit, and he was just like, bro, I want you to invest into my career, buy some equipment and stuff. You know, you're going to get the money back, uh, you know, because he had put out an album, like a look, they was putting out like maxi singles or something back. Mm -hmm. It was like two songs on on a cassette on each side. And um, he did that. He did, he made a little bit of money and um, he wanted me to invest into it because he was going to spend the money out of the studio and that was like killing his pocket. So I did that. Mm -hmm. And uh, made you want to see. Like, oh, yeah, let's yeah, do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what happened was I actually bought the equipment. I was just going to be the investor, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And uh, my boy, Double B, 
he was supposed to know how to work everything and, and end up, he didn't know how to work anything. He had me buy all that shit. He <laughs> got the shit, we need somebody to put it He knew what to buy, though. I will give him credit on that, though. He knew what to buy. He's like, yeah, get the, that rolling Dr. Uh, Rhythm Boss uh, drum machine, get the four track. We need a four track. He didn't know, so you had everything. Yeah, right? yeah I got everything. When we started hooking it up. I'm like, you know how to hook it up? He's scratching his head, looking at the back. You know, he ain't knowing about the quarter inch plug. He didn't know where the RCAs go. And I'm just like, man, let me tinker with this shit. And I bought everything from the pawn shop, so a lot of that shit I didn't even have manuals to. So yeah. I had to learn that shit on the fly. And um, yeah, I ended up learning it within see, a month. No niggas don't read directions yeah, at all. At all. <laughs> all. Man, be trying to build a table, put it together, yeah, yeah. the instructions right there. You get it all together and get to seeing shit missing. You know. Um, but yeah, I ended up doing that. And uh, I say within a month, man, I was, I was, you know, went from DJ Black Sea to, uh, you know, Black Sea. Black sea. Yeah, I was kind of like the DJ at first. I was trying to scratch on the turntables yeah. and do all that stuff. And uh, That's a hidden jewel right there. I didn't yeah, know that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't really work <laughs> out, you know what I mean? But uh, I got into them beats, though. And uh, uh -huh. yeah, it was it was all she wrote after that, you know. So what, uh, let me see how to ask this, because you kind of answered it already. Um, at what point did you know that that music was chosen for you? Um, really, once we kind of dropped a couple songs, we put out this... Uh, this track called HP is my home. I wasn't knowing it. I just made the beat with my brother and T Lo. Uh, Herm Lewis put out T Lo, you know, and uh, this is before he was with Herm Lewis. You know, we was all in the studio. So T Lo was like our ice cube in the hood. Mm -hmm. And we put out a song called HP is my home. Matter of fact, you no, know, it was Harvard taking over. We was just putting out, we just trying to push our block, our neighborhood. Yeah. And we made a song called Harvard Taking Over and everybody was coming up there looking for the track. They loved it. They was like, man, we trying to get that. And I'm like, man, hold on. My brother, <laughs> I'm like, man, we need to like, it's, it's costing me. My brother like, bro, we need to start selling these. You're giving them away. I just wanted the people just to play it, you know? Yeah. And my brother, you know, was like, bro, that's money right there. We sell them $5, like too short. Yeah. And we ended up doing it when we got the little Memorex tapes and TDK tapes from, uh, uh, Radio Shack buying like the little 20 packs, 50 packs. Making a bubble. And uh, yeah, we, we ended up making a couple more songs. HP is My Home was the second one. We seen how the Harbor one took off and everybody on Harbor was playing it. But then people in Hunters Point, you see a few dudes from other neighborhoods kind of like didn't really want to play it because, you know, we, we talking about Harbor. Yeah, so exactly. Policy is coming up doing, yeah, We ended up doing <laughs> HP is My Home. So, you know what I mean? And that, uh, Everybody played that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, and it was on. I already knew. I said, yeah, this is my calling right here. And, uh, yeah, that kept me off the block, you know, from selling. Like, I was out there slanging like hell. But I, I was still kind of lightweight getting out there late night. After late night, come in, make stay the time. up all night and making that music, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing I, I, I noticed, and I ain't going to skip past this, you said you was producing, too. Mm -hmm. Did you? Is there any hits out that you done produced? As far as like for yeah. for RBL and everything. Yeah, I produced the whole first album, except Shit. G's by the one two threes. TC produced that one, but the whole first album I produced probably sixty percent of the second album, Ruthless by Law. Mm -hmm. I did all the Hitman album, the Solo Creep. I did uh, Noh all the Noh album, Noh Mafia. Uh, man, and I done did a whole bunch of stuff just here and there, just producing stuff from uh, different artists, you know, here and there, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I say well, my my biggest accomplishments though is is uh, that first RBL and that first Hitman album. They're my two jewels right there. Man, that's hella dope. Sidebar, I'm gonna go on off on a little tangent real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, artists like like being an artist, you you cannot just be a rapper. You feel me? You gotta have your hands in everything at least right. enough. Know a little bit to not get played. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like he he know how to do beats. You feel me? That that save a lot of money in your pocket money. once you yeah. know how to do the beats. You feel me? Because then you don't need no producer engineering. Get up under somebody's shoulder real quick and watch how they do it. You feel mm -hmm. me? Whether whether your your quality is good or not, you can make it that much better. Next thing you know, you invested in your own studio versus getting studio time. You feel Dope. me? And you save save a bag right there on camera. Save a bag right mm -hmm. there. You create your whole squad you feel me and keep it going but you gotta you gotta dabble in everything even merch like me myself personally i, right. I interned for doing shirts you know now i'm printing my right. own man. Hey, that's what you gotta do for bro. Show we yeah. outside, but that's what you gotta do artists man if you want it like if you, if you really up in this thing do full circle do full circle it ain't just sure. about the booth for sure even though this view is from the booth <laughs> right right right, right. Uh, so Speak on some of the newest singles and features you dropped. You, should I name some or you just gonna go crazy? Uh, you talking about current or you talking about in the past? Current. 
Oh, uh, current, yeah. Uh, well, the current thing that I, I'm pushing actually uh, with my jewel, my lead off singer was uh was happening with Larry June, mm-hmm. he's your nephew. So slapping, yeah, that Free one doing music. numbers. Shout out Larry <laughs> June for hopping on that thing uh-huh. and uh, shot them numbers up on that. It set up the album real lovely. And uh, the follow up behind that, I, I believe was. Um, Man, I dropped so many. Was it Chasing Paper? Uh, it probably was Chasing Paper. Oh, my name, yeah, my name. Yeah, yeah, so oh, chasing, chasing Paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So chasing Paper. <laughs> now, we done dropped about six, seven videos off this. All facts, you know, produced mm-hmm. by, uh, I mean, shot by Bro Jackson. You know what I mean? Um, Shout out, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, man, what else we put out? rat tat tat Man, um, I, I got a few of them, man. It's probably about like seven videos to this album. That's about seven or eight, something like that. So when you, when you, uh, uh, we're gonna go a little bit in the marketing like do you think that it's better to drop the single first and then drop the album or drop an album and then pick which singles um it just or depends do you like the man i like I, I really like to drop a, a single now usually i should just drop albums but yeah. it's good to kind of set your album up because you drop it and nobody knew you was coming it's gonna be kind of quiet unless mm-hmm. you did a bunch of marketing and promotion but mm-hmm. a single always helps especially if you got somebody of the caliber of larry june or mm-hmm. Or you know something equal to that, you know what I mean. So I would I would definitely drop a single if you got somebody hot. You know even if it's your own single, just test the water to see what the people bite. Yeah, and that sets your album up. You know because once you got them ears tuned in, then you know the rest is history. You know so once you drop like that them. release date, they're gonna be waiting for it. Like okay, I want to hear some more. Okay, you know. But for surely, if I was a new artist, I'd probably drop two to three singles. I wouldn't even just drop an album. Just keep it. Would you I'll focus on one, but drop three? No, I, I would drop one at a time, do the video, promote it, push it, maybe push it about a month or two. Depending on, you get a feel, you know what I mean? Feel it was what? It was what, if people messing with it or not, if yeah. not, drop another one, you know what I mean? For and, sure. Uh, do the same thing. Give it a month or two. Don't just throw them out and then go on to the next one. So exactly. A lot of them just put it out and think because they put it on their Instagram, that's enough. You yeah. Push it. But if you ain't got that many followers, you only got maybe a thousand people following you, you know, there ain't nobody seeing that, you know what I mean? Something that we was talking about uh, on, the, on the back scene, you feel me, behind the scenes was as far as uh, just putting money into the YouTube ads and the promo and everything, yeah. you know? Um, mm-hmm. If you don't got a big following or anything, that's kind of where you want to start off at. Exactly. Um, but once again, the, the YouTube ads, the IG promos, Facebook promos, yeah, whatever it may Google be, Google ads, all that. Yeah, man, you know, on top of on top of the street work, playlists, mm-hmm. all that. Yes, sir. Uh, one feature that you uh, the one one song that you have featured on, I want to talk about mm-hmm. is the uh, the KR Mac. Oh yeah, with right, Sam Quinn right, too. Right, right. Seeing that y'all just did that. Shout out my brother KR Mac, man. Yeah. That's his grade school yeah. with me and him. So yeah, that's a slapper. Seeing that, bro, I was like, okay, it's yeah. lit. Um, how did that come together, though? Um, that happened really through. Oh, me and KR Mac had already did something for his uh, album. We did a dope song. Um, I can't think of the, the name of it off top, but uh, we did a nice one uh, about a year ago. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was only right he came back. But really, I, he what happened was Tahoe Mike, the one who produced it. Yeah. Does, did a track or two for me. And um, through that, he was like, man, I got a track that got San Quinn and KR Mac on it, man. I think it'd be dope on it. So he the one that's lined it up. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh yeah, KR Mac, that's my guy. And Quinn, of course, that's my, you know, that's little bruh. So yes, yeah. we made it happen. It was meant to happen, mm-hmm. man. That, that thing just dropped too. Y'all go check that out. KR, KR Mac, Mac, Black Sea, San Quinn. Oh yeah. Yeah, that thing <laughs> slapped. It's hard. So now let's get into the book, man. Oh, yeah. A part of survival. Look, it was meant to be. Hold on, I'm right, talking about you right, right now, right, brother. Right. <laughs> <laughs> A part of survival, though. Um, mm-hmm. So, what made you even want to? What made you even start writing this book? Um, really, man, because our story is interesting. You know, ain't too many people in the Bay who kind of got a story like you know, as far as me, man, coming up just the gang banging uh, in San Francisco. I was real heavy in the turf wars with, uh, with Hunters Point, Filmo, Hunters Point, Sunnydale. You know, yeah. I was really a factor in all that stuff. You know, just the, the people I knew, the, the, the big time dope dealers I was dealing with, from flops to the, you know, being around the dudes like James Beasley's and all that, to going from that to the music, to with the music split and falling out with dudes in my neighborhood, and you know, and over 20 some people dying, just the off of Mr. C death, just, it's just a lot of stuff that contributed to the fallout of, of, of the split on our neighbor in our neighborhood, mm-hmm. and then just, 
me bouncing back to where I am now, I just think it's just a, a story to be told, you know what I mean? So, you know, uh, inspiration, you know, you can go through trials and tribulations and still bounce it's back. About how you get out of it, though. Yeah, because uh, a lot of people would have been counted out, especially in the music thing, you yeah. know, uh, when you got one half of your group gone and then you pull in somebody else like a hitman and he get killed and, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like, man, it just wouldn't stop. So. Yeah, it was just something uh, that needed to, the story needed to be told. You know? So, you know, I, I touched on it uh, here and there doing interviews, but I wanted to do more of a little Go deep dive. Yeah. I mean, a book is better than a movie. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I want to do a little bit more of a deep dive just on the back history uh, of me and how I got involved in it and how the peace treaty stuff I was involved in with us and, you know, all that. So, yeah, you so feel like it was book. some kind of therapy for you? Oh, most of them, most deaf, yeah. most deaf, man. Yeah, yeah, I, I loved it, you know. And my boy Charles, who I worked with, it, uh, worked on it with, man. It was, it was good, just conversating because he made it easy for me, you know. Because I wrote like a chapter or two by myself, and it was just taking too long because I had too much going through my head. I was gonna ask you that too, like, were yeah. you just talking it out and had had a major yeah. ass type of idea? Yeah, that's what crazy. he was doing. Well, we really what we do, we just record the conversation. We just get uh -huh. on the phone, and he had some little thing, program thing where he could record it, mm -hmm. and we'd just sit and chop it up, just like a normal kind of like I mean, you chopping it up mm -hmm. right here, and we'd just start from the beginning, and he made it fun and where. And stuff I yeah, didn't see like bouncing all over the place. Yeah, yeah, we just bouncing all over the place instead mm -hmm. of me trying to go in chronological order. I was trying to start from 72, mm -hmm. 74, <laughs> and trying to hear me thinking about when I got in the dope game. And, all, and, I was, and he was like, nah, you don't do it like that. Take forever. You got to just bounce around, get all that stuff off your mind yeah. that you're thinking about right now. Get yeah, it down. Organize it. Talk, talk about it. We'll organize it later on. So, yeah. That's hella dope. And one thing you say, y'all recorded conversations. Do you got mm -hmm. an audio book to this book? Yeah, that's what we're working on now. That's like, your, your voice and everything? I was. I'm, I'm, everybody want me to do my voice, but, man, it's so much work. And it's, I just ain't really got the got time. It's man. a whole ass I, different I want, recording yeah. studio <laughs> process. I, I know. <laughs> it's just too. I'm like, man, Ari, I got to read the book over again and just get everything. <laughs> I'm just, my brother's just pay somebody, man. It's like we were saying, you listen to me music too much so you're gonna be like i don't feel like doing it yeah not, not <laughs> again just like go i mean even though i could kind of run through it but you know yeah. it's, it's just I, I just ain't got the time to really make it right and i'm a perfectionist too so it's yeah. gonna it's gonna take some time to, to get it right so right now my boy i do want somebody black you know what i mean mm -hmm. i don't want to get some nerd doing it and shit some dude with a <laughs> british accent or some shit some weird shit <laughs> it's most definitely gonna be a brother who's gonna who's gonna do it who you know, gonna make people feel mm -hmm. it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I got if I, I got a little. Uh, you should you should add sound effects within it too. That's a good idea. Right, That's sound good effects, idea. whatever. You feel me? Even if it's even if it's footsteps, you know. Your you footsteps or something. Yeah, you are talking really about driving off in the car? Out car? Yeah. Effect, yeah. Driving the car? Driving off? Or gunshots? Mm -hmm. We talking about shooting? The, Had a real dope. vision within it. You feel me? Without actually seeing it, that'd be that's dope. dope. But I never heard an audio book like that. I'm surprised it ain't already out. That's, That's what crazy. I'm saying. You would think. But it'd be you know? so much work just doing it. Right? Like, man, forget that. <laughs> Look, we recorded it, bro. That's it. That's yeah. it. Golly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, let me see. Let me see. What's your inspiration to keep going? Man, my, my, not only, you know, my kids, but, you know, for sure, Mr. C and Hitman. You know yeah. what I mean? Just, I got to keep the torch lit. You know, that RBL, man, them three letters is like, you know, I, I got to keep it cracking. So that's really it right there. My kids and my two homies, you know, who passed away, just doing it for them, trying to, you know, keep that torch lit, you know. At all times. Yes, sir. For Once again, for the younger generation, what RBL stand for? I know. Ruthless by law, yeah, a lot of people don't know. We self-titled the second album, Ruthless by law. They still didn't get it. Like, huh? It was like, man, let's self-title it, you know, because it was going to be called Inside the Mind of a Criminal, uh -huh. the, the second album. But we ended up, it was kind of long. And then the cover that we had, too, was just crazy. We was looking inside. And he had our manager with his head on the table with the flat American flag with mm -hmm. coke and weed and guns <laughs> and handcuffs. And he had blood coming down. It looked kind of gory, so... <laughs> we he was, they was like, man, they're not gonna put this up in Tower or the Warehouse or Camelot yeah. or none of that. And the label shot it down, like, nah, we got it. So we ended up using the picture we used was actually our glossy picture, mm -hmm. our 8x10 promo picture. So yeah, we ended up using that. And I said, man, let's just self title it, Ruthless by Law. And uh, he was like, perfect, man. Yeah, nobody know who y'all. Everybody keep asking what the RBL stands for in the posse. So he was like, let's go on and do that. I just had a weird ass epiphany, right? Like, do you think. Because 
the young generations, they all about abbreviations now. You know, mm-hmm. even everybody. Right, right. right. You think you was the first Bay Area dude that even with the abbreviation? Um, nah, it was, a, um, well, something like that. I know, because it was like, with the numbers, it was 415. Yeah. You had AMW back when we came out. You know, uh-huh. you had SIC. They all, some of them came out like right after us. So I don't yeah. think we influenced them. I think they kind of already had their name, America's Most It was just born. that era. It was just that era, yeah. you know, because we was copying NWA in them, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, with the three letters. We yeah, just added NWA, the posse, yeah, because yeah, it was NWA posse, so we yeah. just wanted RBL posse. So, yeah. uh, you know, NWA was a big influence on us, them in 415, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, yeah, so we, you know, I I, I know it, it was a lot of, like, letters coming out in Hunters Point, though, for mm-hmm. sure. From the GLPs to the Cold World Hustlers and all them, to the UDIs, everybody, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah, uh, GRP, <laughs> RTD, <laughs> man, the point went crazy with the three letters. You know what I mean? But as far as in the Bay Area, I don't, I, don't, I can't really say because some of them kind of was so far. I mean, was right backed up right on our bumpers to where they probably already had it. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what's what's uh what's some of your what's some people that inspired your your actual flow? Um. Well, my flow. It's really just kind of like, it just evolved over the years. But when I first yeah. came out, I was trying to find myself. I was trying to sound like D-Loke from 415. Okay. You know, my boy D-Loke, I was a big fan of his. So I was trying to mimic him in Ice Cube a little bit. Bro, d Not, 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 uh, not D-Loke. Okay, for sure. D-Loke is the, was the main one. Him and Rich, okay. Rich, uh yeah, Brother Broski came in later on, uh-huh. you know. But, uh, no, nah, it was D-Loke, man. He was, he was dope as hell to me, you know, mm-hmm. so... It was him and Ice Cube was as far as like rap influences who I wanted to rap like. But yeah. as far as uh, just music and groups, period, it, it was just like different different ones. Like I say, 415, NWA, also IMP. They was one of the ones. Oh, yeah, they was one of the first groups out, too. They was before us. IMP. IMP, cool, nothing them. They, uh, they was the first three-letter group. Frisco also? Yeah, Frisco. Okay. Yeah, out of Lakeview. Yeah, cool, nothing them. So, and uh, also ATC. I forgot about them. They came out in like 89. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, but uh, they was like influences as far as our group, me wanting to be in the group. And then when it came to my rap style, like I say, D-Lo, Ice Cube, and then when it came to my production, it first started off like Dr. Dre mm-hmm. and um, like DJ Quick. It was like two big influences. DJ and, Quick was hard. Yeah, yeah. Sure. To and the as the, the time went on, I kind of got influenced by Code 187, mm-hmm. you know, who put out cocaine in them, you know, but a lot. I, I started kind of taking a few... Uh, ideas and stuff from him so yeah that was pretty much it and see I, I asked you that question because like nowadays it's it's so hard for people just to give people their roses while, right. they, while they alive and everything right. you know um, and what I mean by that is like the the young generation they won't even they won't even oh, get a props or, or, or admit nobody. you know acknowledge mm-hmm. like how I, how I look at it is like when I when I got into rap, bro, I was listening to Lil Wayne like a motherfucker, and mm-hmm. I and I and I learned his raps, and then from learning his raps, I developed okay, let me try to add my own words into that exactly. same flow. Exactly. Okay, then like I started studying all the all the artists, and I can say that to this right, day, you know. Right. So I just asked that question, just overall to let the artists out there know, bro, keep it solid. It'll get you way further. You feel me? Like yeah, everybody yeah, is influenced by somebody. We gotta we gotta stop all this little funky for nothing shit and all the everything like we in with that you know. Real talk. Um, Real talk. Uh, 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 uh. So I got one last question for you, right? Mm-hmm. But it's gonna go on a little multiple thing. What's five pieces of game that you could give to somebody that look up to you? Five pieces. I'm a count. Man. <laughs> one, be your own man. Uh huh. You know, uh, one. I mean, two. Stay motivated, mm-hmm. you know. Um, stay ambitious, man. You know, uh, and I would say too, you know, people always say that you know, like follow your dreams and all that. And I would say, you know, I always say this: this just do something that you love doing, and, and you won't feel like you're working. You know what I mean? It's like I'll be feeling like I'm getting over. Like it's like, damn, I got a job that I fucking get paid to do. I love going to the club. I love fucking hanging out in the studio. Mm-hmm. And I get paid for this shit. Like, so if you do something you love doing, you, you never working. You know exactly. what I mean? 
whether you like taking pictures or doing whatever, you still doing, you know, master that shit and do that and get paid for that. Mm -hmm. And um, so what we on, like three, four, four, yeah, yeah. we on fours, I would say, um, you know, keep your circle, you know, solid, you know, make sure your folks stay, keep loyal people around you who are gonna contribute to your, you know, to your process. Mm -hmm. And um, really- Five gotta be a good one. Yeah, five, <laughs> I would probably say, man, um, don't get distracted. Stay the fuck out of jail. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't be a fool. That's going to be don't number be one right dummy. there. Don't be a crash dummy. You know what I mean? Don't let a motherfucker throw you off your program, man, and trick you off the streets. You know what I'm saying? That's big facts right yeah, there. For so, sure, for sure. You know, that's what I would say, man. And those five right there is really all you need. You know what yeah. I mean? That's the key right there to really be able to move with respect throughout the world. Not yes, let, let alone your own hood, you yes, know? Sir. Yes, for sir. sure. For um, sure. With that being said, what's any future projects you want to shout out? Any shows yeah. you got coming up? Yeah, yeah, we got a show coming up. Actually, uh, this uh, on the twenty second, we're gonna be in a in a, a green lot at the Forty Nine er game. Okay. Uh, uh, doing the tailgate party, we're gonna be there with Goldie of the Federation. Twenty second of October, right? Twenty second October, okay. and then um, November fourth, uh, we got a show out here, Vallejo at the Empress Theater okay. with Jay Worthy and uh, Monroe Flo. Okay. And um, I told, uh, November 5th, we got a show in Oakland. We're going to be out there uh, for the Blockburners, uh, I believe it's the 16th or 18th anniversary mm -hmm. out there in Oakland, 811 54th Street out there in Oakland. So backstage passes when you're 10 years Yeah, man, so I do. <laughs> yeah, we're doing all the classics. I'll do some, some new stuff. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's about it right now for shows. Uh, we got we got a few others that, that ain't, you know, the deposits Still ain't locking them in and so, everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got we got to lock them in, but um, business first. Yeah, business first. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm working on a new album. The album is actually done. I'm just uh, getting trying to get the features together right now. So. You got a name for it? Yeah, it's called Heavy in It. You okay. know what I mean? So just like being heavy in the game, heavy in the music, heavy in the streets, just, you know, mm -hmm. we just heavy in it. You know what I mean? You got a rough date for it? So you feel me? Top um, of spring, summer? Single's going to start coming. I ain't going to drop. I was going to drop this fourth, fourth quarter, trying to drop around uh, December, but them big dogs is coming out. So I'm I'm going to wait till like around December. But a, a few singles. I get this, uh, this these last two features. Them singles finna start rolling out ASAP, mm -hmm. so I'm finna get the singles going like probably immediately, probably in November sometime. They gonna start seeing me with videos and everything. We try to run about two to three singles out before I even drop the album. You know, okay. set it up, set it up lovely. Hopefully, try to get over there to Gazi and uh, you know, they get make some shake one yeah. time. You yeah. know, yes sir, <laughs> yes sir. So uh, let everybody know your social media and where they can find you at. Also your website where they can get all your merch and products. Too. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You can follow us on uh, Twitter and uh, IG at RBO Posse. Uh, same thing on Facebook, the www.facebook.com slash RBO Posse. The same thing for YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, you know, youtube.com slash RBO Posse and the website. They want the merch, the book, everything, www.rboposse.com. Real simple, you know what I mean? You feel me? Hey, yes, go sir. cop that real fast. I'm just saying it's a lot wherever you go. Yes, sir. With that being said, yo, this is Views from the Booth. Mac Dre approved. Thank you, Black hey, C. You already know. Much Much love, time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We out. Count this motherfucking money and shit. You know what I mean? Check it out. And bitch, don't check me. Check your motherfucking interest right. You know what I'm saying? Numbers, nigga. Black C.